Thank you. Uh, we have lots of speaker slips, as you might imagine, um, and as much as I'd like to give everyone uh, lots of time, I, I just can't. So um, I'm going to limit people to two minutes, which is still going to be a lot of time for all the speaker slips we have. So if you don't need the, the whole two minutes, um, please take less than that. Um, and what I'll do is I'm going to probably call out two or three names, so um, please be ready to step up right away uh, with your comments. Well, we're starting with speaker slips in favor uh, of staff recommendation. We'll start with Susan Schiffer, followed by Sharon Gale, followed by Tom Fox. Hi, my name is Susan Schiffer, and uh, I have lived in San Diego for over 40 years, and I live across from Balboa Park, and I walk every day there, and I was employed as a teacher at the Museum of Man. And inside the museum, I taught about great civilizations, their glories, and their demise. Outside the museum, it was my duty to guide large groups of San Diego school children to the other section of the museum through the Plaza de California. And we ran a gauntlet of traffic constantly across the bisected Plaza de California because the cars have been given primacy over pedestrians inside Balboa Park. So our school children did this constantly, and so did I. Um, let's see, cars streamed through the heart of the Museum of Man campus, cutting the Plaza de California in two. It's an absurdity. And at the same time, I walk every day in Balboa Park. When I cross the uh, Laurel Street Bridge, and I looked down right at the section before, across from the administration uh, building at the Museum of Man, I can look down into a scrubby area that is dedicated to the archery club where they shoot arrows and there's targets, and that's where the bridge would be. I am a creative specialist, hired as such, and I have a vision, and the bypass bridge, which has been sort of characterized in villainy, would be elegant, and it would be an amazing, uh, appropriate way to direct traffic into the park. And so I'd like to say that the Plaza Panama Project has worked diligently to put positive, innovative, imaginative concepts together to make Balboa Park the very best environment possible. Extremely capable people on the project have been influenced by the pioneering, creative, and confident problem-solving spirit of the original founders of our city. In conclusion, I say the Plaza de Panama project is a brilliant, innovative, and viable project. Please pass it. Thank you. Thank you. Sharon Gale, followed by Tom Fox, followed by Mark DeCuna. Hello. My name is Sharon Gale. I live in Mission Hills. I'm asking you to support the project because I've done my homework. I've read the AR. I've read the re, uh, staff's report to you. So I know that there are a lot of alternatives have been looked at, but this is the best one. Everything has its flaws, but no one can come up with anything better. Soho has come up with a plan recently that their board of directors has voted to support unanimously the, Soho, the uh, Lewis plan. That also has a bypass bridge but it goes to the north, and it takes out railing also, but also with my lighting fixtures. And it sticks out, because it has to go around the administration building, it sticks out further, it goes further, it's longer, it costs more money. They have a road under the bridge going up through the middle of the uh, Palm Canyon. They have a road on the north behind the Old Globe Open Air Theater all that traffic behind, right next to that theater. And then they have road going through, roads going through the zoo property. And they're, they put the garage underneath the Plaza de Panama. It'll have to be mechanically ventilated. It can't be um, just open air on the side, which means electric bills, which means higher, uh, higher fees for parking. It means ventilation coming up through the plaza. It means elevators come through through the plaza. I really don't understand this. This, the Plaza de Panama project is the best one of all the various alternatives. Even doing nothing leaves everything is not as good. 
that was one of the alternatives looked at in the EIR, and I assume you've all read that. Thank I you. I hope you support the staff. Thank you. Thank you. Tom Fox, followed by Mark Takuna, followed by Elizabeth Castillo. And I don't mean to be rude in cutting people off, but I, I have to cut people off. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, board members, uh, my name is Tom Fox. I live in the Bellefontaine condominiums at 2400 Sixth Avenue between Laurel and Kalamea. Uh, I can uh, speak, I'm authorized to speak on behalf of our uh, homeowners there in the Bellefontaine. We have supported this project from the beginning. We reviewed the EIR. Uh, and we continue to support it. Uh, as one of the uh, residences uh, that is so close to the park and most affected by everything that happens on the west side, we believe strongly, very strongly, uh, that just as in 1915 and 1935, a western entrance to the park is very important to all the citizens of the community, and it should be preserved. <coughs> By preserving that, uh, with this project and moving the cars away from the plaza, we achieve uh, multiple goals and we are in strong uh, support of this project. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mark Takuna, followed by Elizabeth Castillo, followed by Susan um, Laveau, looks like. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mark Takuna. Um, I live two blocks away from the entrance of the park. Um, I'm an architect in town. I have no affiliation with anything. I, uh, Walk my dog two day, two times a day in that park, go running all the time. Uh, it's an extension of my living room. Um, I've looked over the renderings and things like that professionally. I mean, I think everything that's presented is just amazing. Um, I think it's great. Uh, above and beyond anything that, uh, yeah, I would expect. Um, I have plenty of friends, colleagues, so many people. Uh, it's always the things that I've experienced from these type of meetings is um, it's always difficult to get the people that approve or think that something is okay um, to show up to these meetings and say, you know, we, we approve it, we like it. It's always uh, easier for the people who are angry and have something to say to show up. Uh, so I felt, you know, it was important for me to just say as somebody who lives there and uses the park and I have plenty of friends uh, and colleagues that uh, think it should be approved. Um, so. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Elizabeth Castillo, followed by Susan Laveau, followed by Micah Parson. Hello, I'm Elizabeth Castillo. I live in Rancho Bernardo. And as a little girl, I attended the fifth grade program. That was my first introduction to the park. And I'm here today representing the Balboa Park Cultural Partnership to express our strong support for the Plaza de Panama project. And our partnership is an alliance of 26 Balboa Park institutions dedicated to developing, promoting, and sustaining the park. Our members believe that all of, the, of all the alternatives studied for the park, the Plaza de Panama project does the best job of balancing the needs of a variety of park users. The, San Diego, the City of San Diego's historical resources web pages list numerous benefits of historical preservation. The proposed plan delivers several of these benefits, including stimulating private investment, supporting jobs, nourishing cultural organizations, and generating heritage tourism. Public access is an important part of achieving these benefits. This project will make the park more accessible while maintaining its historic character. We want to let you know the project has very strong support in the park. We see it as a vital step to take the park into its next 100 years. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Susan Laveau, followed by Micah Partson, followed by Charlene Browd. Thank you. My name is Susan Lovall, and I am the Vice President, CFO, and COO of the San Diego Natural History Museum. And I'm here today speaking on behalf of Michael Hager, President and CEO of the San Diego Natural History Museum, immediate past president of the Balboa Park Cultural Partnership, member of the Balboa Park Committee, and member of the 2015 Host Committee. He's unfortunately out of town today, so I'm speaking on his behalf. Um, there's been a great deal of misinformation lately about the Balboa Park Cultural Institution and their support of the Lewis Plan versus the Jacob Plan. In fact, the Balboa Park Cultural Partner Partnership voted to support the Jacobs Plan. 
the Jacobs Plan for Plaza de Panama has a unanimous support of the Natural History Museum Board of Directors, staff, and the majority of our 800 volunteers and 8,000 members. Why is that, you may wonder? We believe the visitor experience in Balboa Park will be greatly enhanced by the Jacob Plan. We would like our, gust, our guests to continue to enjoy the pedestrian space, space in the Plaza de Panama, California Plaza, West El Prado, and in the Oregon Pavilion area just as much as they do in front of the Fleet and the Natural History Museum along the East El Prado. As a member of the 2015 host committee, we have identified the need for pedestrian space, car-free plazas, and good traffic circulation to provide the type of centennial event Balboa Park in San Diego needs and deserves. Thank you very much. Thank you. Micah Parson, followed by Charlene Brown, followed by Steve Hutter, or Hutton. Good afternoon. My name is Micah Parson. I'm Chief Executive Officer of the San Diego Museum of Man and also the Secretary of the Balboa Park Cultural Partnership. As the westernmost institution on Baboa Park Central Mesa, the Museum of Man is arguably the most impacted by the proposed Plaza de Panama project. As you know, we're the institution that is closest to the proposed Centennial Bridge, which would be directly across from our administrative building and curve around our collections facilities. While we understand the project will have an, a historical impact, we believe that the benefits far outweigh any such impact. Nearly 7,000 cars pass by our front door each day. Unfortunately, this thoroughfare creates a safety concern for our patrons, including many school children, as well as for many visitors who back up into traffic as they take photographs of the historic California Tower. If cars were removed from the Plaza de California, it would surely become one of the most enjoyable pedestrian spaces in all of Belmont Park. We are not in favor of any alternative that proposes to continue traffic through the Plaza de California. This would simply perpetuate the problems that we have experienced for years and which will continue to get worse as traffic increases. Similarly, we are not in favor of the Lewis Plan, which only very recently even came to our attention. In our view, the Plaza de Panama project does the best job of balancing the needs of Balboa Park, its visitors, and its institutions. Thank you very much. Uh, we encourage you strongly to endorse this project. Thank you, sir. Uh, Charlene Brown, is she here? Hi, my name is Steve Hutter, uh, president of Hutter, Hutter Designs. I uh, live in University Heights, and I have a, uh, a firm in uh, Mission Valley. I've been there for 14 years. I worked uh, with Estrada Land Planning in the uh, late 80s and early 90s when they did the master plan and the precise plan. And today I'd like to share with a quote from you from uh, Lao Tzu. He's a sixth century uh, teacher and philosopher. Shape clay into a vessel. It is the space within that makes it useful. Cut doors and windows for a room. It is the holes which makes it useful. Therefore, benefit comes from what is there. Usefulness from what is not there. I would say that the surrounding museums and various entities have obviously benefited over the years from having cars in the plaza. However, it's lost its usefulness in being filled with objects, in this case, automobiles. Instead of being a special place, space for the citizens of San Diego and beyond to not only congregate but to celebrate and share the rare, honor the rare space and place that this area historically represents. My name is Steve Hutter with Hutter Designs. I fully support the Plaza de Panama project. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Read, um, I'm not sure how to read it, from San Diego Museum of Art. Hickerman. 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 Followed by Jim Kidrick. Again, my name is Reed Vickerman. I'm the deputy director from the San Diego Museum of Art. Just want to let you know that our trustees have considered this, um, this project very heavily. We looked through the EIR, spent a lot of time debating it internally, and have come out in support of this plan. A couple things to consider. The Plaza de Panama is really the front door to the art museum. We think that reactivating it with pedestrians in a safe way is a huge advantage for San Diego and for the museum. Um, I would also say that the, the Lewis plan that's been discussed by a few folks, it routes through the 
the Old Globe Way, which is immediately behind the art museum between us and the zoo. I don't really see that as very, being very practical. I think it adds a lot of congestion and traffic um, to an area that's already uh, inadequate. And so I guess I would, to save you some time, just leave you with a couple of thoughts. Um, you know, I think there's been a lot of alternatives discussed, but I would argue that you know, perfection is sort of the enemy of progress. I think we have to take the, what we have at hand, which is probably the only practical thing we'll see in our lifetimes that has any kind of funding source and proceed forward with it. Um, and I would also just share with you, my grandfather ironically built bridges for a living across the Ohio River. And I remember a saying he used to give me as a child, which was, it takes a thousand men to build a bridge, but only one to blow it up. And so I think we really have to think about, you know, there's thousands of San Diegans who aren't here today who I think need to be heard um, in support of, of restoring this pedestrian um, place uh, of Balboa Park. And uh, I would just like to say they're not here today, but we should be thinking about them as well. Thanks very much. Thanks. Jim Kidrick, followed by Chris Duggan. Thank you very much. Jim Kidrick, President and CEO of the San Diego Air and Space Museum. You've heard our many partners in support of this project, as which we are at the other end of the park. If any single organization on the other side should say, close the West Entry, it would be us, because they'd all come in on our side. Well, we don't support that. We believe West Entry from the, from the to the park is absolutely essential in the future. We also would like to reiterate, if we went back in 1915 and we asked everybody there, those visionaries that created this wonderful, wonderful bubble of park, were you done improving the park? I think they'd laugh at us. I think this is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to make those improvements that we need in that park. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chris Duggan. Okay, that concludes our speaker slips in favor. We'll move now to speaker slips opposed. Um, and we have a number of seated time and organized presentations that I will endeavor to accommodate here. Um, starting with Ron Buckley with seated time from Linda Henry and Tom Henry. And this uh, seated time presentation will be followed by Dan Soderberg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, my name is Ron Buckley. I was a staff to this board for 13 years. I um, worked with Vicki Estrada on the preparation of the master plan and the Central Mesa Precise Plan. I was the liaison with the National Park Service when we put those plans together. I have lots of other uh, Balboa Park experience, which I'm not gonna belabor uh, you with today. Um, there's so much information and understanding I'd like to impart to you today, uh, but which will obviously only occur if you're smart enough to ask the pertinent and probing questions, and that goes for everybody that's talking. There's two things that seem to get lost or are greatly underappreciated in all of this acrimony that we deal with on this uh, project. First, just why is the park so important and unique? And I found that very few people really quite understand that. Second, just what does the Park Service really recommend as appropriate treatment? The, uh, the park was basically uh, chosen, or I, let me digress. National Historic Landmarks are chosen through studies prepared by the staff of the National Survey of Historic Sites and Buildings. That is evaluated by the Advisory Board on National Parks, Historic Sites, Buildings, and Monuments and then approved by the Secretary of the Interior in accordance with the Historic Sites Act of 1935. The significance of National Historic Landmarks, um, they are basically transcend local and parochial interests, and they are determined to possess national significance in commemorating the history of the United States. Balboa Park is recognized and significant for having with some unfortunate losses and a few grievously incompatibly designed new structures and improvements, the largest and most complete collection of buildings and resources from any exposition held since London's 1851 great exposition of the works and industry of all nations, which was noted for its famous Crystal Palace, which burned down several years thereafter. 
we've effectively preserved for almost 100 years an incredible architectural and horticultural assemblage that was basically meant to be temporary. In spite of our losses and gaps, the park has maintained a great deal of integrity and it still conveys the character and historic features of the expositions. The overriding goal of the precise plan and what the National Park Service wishes the city to embrace is to preserve those remaining resources and features from that period, reconstruct missing and or deteriorated buildings or features, and replace building elements or features that are not historical and not consistent with the design from the period of significance. Should also be said they don't want you to put in stuff that's not appropriate either. Basically, we should be trying to return this resource to as close as its 1935 condition as possible. That's why it was significant. The Park Service feels very strongly that it is such a unique resource, you need to very carefully monitor what it is you're going to do to it. And in every instance, attempt to work towards minimizing, uh, if not uh, uh, eliminating, changes uh, to the park that are not consistent with that direction. What we essentially agreed to do with the application that the uh, National Park Service asked us to sign in uh, 1974 was the, uh, that we were fully conscious of the high responsibility of the nation, or, or to the nation rather, that goes with the ownership and care of a property classified as having national significance and worthy of National Historic Landmark status. We agreed, the mayor signed this, to preserve so far as practical and to the best of our abilities, the historical values that will satisfy the criteria for continuing significance. The issue basically that we're supposed to be dealing with is how to best remove parking and traffic from the center of the park and protect it from inappropriate changes in projects. Instead, this project has uh, changed this goal to basically an exercise in eliminating as many vehicular pedestrian conflicts as absolutely possible and hang any adherence to the policies that are designed to protect the park. The project is made up of many elements, not one of which, in my opinion, is consistent with the Secretary of Interior standards. I hate to be in opposition to your staff on this matter, but I've looked at the stuff, I've evaluated a lot of projects with the standards. I can't find anything that's consistent. To read the EIR, the applicant's only concession is that the bridge isn't consistent with the standards. Um, you should understand that we tried to deal with most of the issues that you see today, we tried to deal with in uh, the precise plan. We tried to close, actually, we investigated trying to close the bridge. Uh, we investigated putting all the parking over at an inspiration point. The institutions ruled the roost, and we were unable to get any headway in that. That is why the plan today still shows the parking garage at the Oregon Pavilion. That was not something I should point out that the Park Service was terribly fond of either. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Dan Soderberg followed by uh, Joan Dallin. And Mr. Soderbrook had ceded time from Gregory May and Sandy Lawless. Good afternoon, Dan Soderbrook, Chair of the Neighborhood Historic Preservation Coalition. To help commemorate uh, National Historic Preservation Month, I brought along this you see right here the pen and ink drawing by one of uh, the giant figures in the uh, modern historic preservation movement, the late Robert Miles Parker, founder of Save Our Heritage Organization, who just passed away recently. You'll see here Wayne Donaldson asked him to do this drawing in 1983 to help commemorate some restoration work done on the House of Hospitality. Miles Parker told me that while drawing this the clarion started to chime, and he made an inscription on here. It read, when you hear the clarion's chime, it's nice to pause and remember B. He was referring to B. Evenson, um, a hugely important person in San Diego history. She and her committee of 100 
helped bring about awareness of the decay of Balboa Park in mid-century, and she helped fight off the intrusion of inc incompatible modern construction in the Spanish colonial revival setting. Fast forward, here we are in 2012, yet again, fighting one of the most destructive schemes in the park, for the park. Protecting Balboa Park is the very reason why B. Evenson uh, and the entire community got behind nominating Balboa Park as a National Historic Landmark for the protection and standards the National Park Service provides. Your focus today as the Historic Resources Board should be on those standards and protections. Um, it should not be about how wonderful a lot of people think it uh, is and all the various things that uh, you know, look nice on the drawings and uh, sound appealing. It's all about the history and the importance of history at this meeting. Be aware that since November of 2010, Save Our Heritage Organization has been identifying um, the impacts this project has and how it does not conform with Secretary of Interior standards. These evaluations have been supported by the National Trust. They have been supported and amplified by the State Historic Preservation Officer. And you must pay attention to the National Park Service letter it clearly identifies and amplifies all of those same concerns that have been expressed since November of 2010. And I must also point out, up until recently, through various cycle reports, the city staff had also identified and amplified those uh, concerns. But, you know, uh, I, I hate to say it, there's another element involved here. It's politics. You have... Uh, the people on one side who are paid consultants who have an interest in getting this project done for one reason, and you have other considerations, uh, people that uh, you know serve at the pleasure of the mayor. I hate to say that. Those of you have, who have served on this uh, board long enough should recognize that the impacts um, city staff has now deemed acceptable if those changes were applied to any other resource coming to you before uh, review, those resources would not be eligible for designation. I hope you realize that. I have yet to speak with anyone who in real life or even academic, academic application of the Secretary of Interior Standards who say that this project is anything less than an unmitigated detriment to uh, Balboa Park. The only ones who uh, dispute this, as I said before, are the, uh, the paid consultants. The primary task at hand is to protect, uh, the primary task at hand is simple. Does the project conform to the standards or not? I will mention to the extent of, that, of, of this context as well that uh, it does not meet the California Environmental Quality um, uh, Act either, which I will point out that uh, it views historical resources much the same way it views and regards natural resources, uh, forests, rivers, beaches, etc. Those impacts must be studied and uh, the impacts uh, must be mitigated. Um, this is not being addressed here regardless of what uh, the EIR, EIR says. And, you know, just talking about the project itself, it's a massive infrastructure project. It tears apart one section of the National Historic Landmark for, another, um, for the benefit of another part of it. The bypass bridge is a monstrosity. Uh, they're not talking about it how it turns um, of the integrity of the National Historic Landmark. You think about the cluster of buildings right there, that, that is one of the most intact, pristine parts of the park, and you're going to put this monstrosity across the face of it. Think about the design integrity of the Cabrillo Bridge, long, straight line. Think about the horizontal lines in the park itself. You're introducing a curvilinear element to the park, and not only is it curvilinear, it goes uphill. I'm out of time. Please remember your task at hand. Remember history. Thank you. 
Thank you. Joan Dolan, followed by John Eisenhart. She's got three. I don't know if she's here. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. My name is Joan Dolan. I, I am representing the League of Women Voters of San Diego. <clears throat> the League of Women Voters is pleased to present its statement on the proposed Plaza de Panama project and to tell you of its support for the alternative 3D, which is a parking garage at Inspiration Point. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Yeah, I, no, this, this, this is slide two. Okay, I can see it over there. Um, first, we would like to point out some of the important disadvantages of the Plaza de Panama <coughs> proposal. The core of Balboa Park is a national historic landmark site. As such, it is subject to the Secretary of the Interior's rehabilitation standards. The draft EIR states that neither the Centennial Bridge nor the Centennial Road will comply with these standards. Specifically, the project would have permanent and perceptible physical impacts. It would have significant visual and spatial effects on the bridge, the California Quadrangle, and on the historic district as a whole. The EIR states that the Centennial Bridge would remove approximately 70 feet of balustrade, which is historic material. The, the Centennial Road, too, would violate the Secretary's standards. It would require extensive grading to create the new road. It would require several concrete and stacked stone retaining walls, some higher than two stories, within the Balboa Park Historic District. Regarding the city's general plan, the Centennial Bridge is inconsistent with policies of the historic preservation element and the urban design element of the city's own general plan. The Centennial Bridge would significantly alter views of the Cabrillo Bridge and the west side of Cabrillo Canyon and thus be inconsistent with the city's policies. The proposed Centennial Road is inconsistent with the city's policies because of the extensive grading which would be associated with it. This is the third one. There are other disadvantages. The Oregon Pavilion parking garage will be located in the very heart of this park. The proposed project encourages and draws cars into the park's core. These vehicles will result in continuing pedestrian ve vehicle conflicts. Many previous studies, <coughs> excuse me, and proposed plans have recommended that parking be moved out of this core to the locations on the periphery. Let's put pedestrians first for a change rather than cars. The inspiration point alternative, let's see, I guess I have a better point up here. Uh, that's where the, the site would be for a garage. This is on the east side of um, Park Boulevard, and this is uh, the alternative 3D, which is in the EIR. It's uh, next to Park Boulevard, which has ready access to freeways. Let's, let's go to the next, the next slide. Uh, this is, uh, these are photos of the site. Uh, the one on, on, on uh, the one on the left is looking southwest toward downtown, <coughs> and you can you can see the existing parking lots. There are two existing parking lots there. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and uh, the. Uh, if, if the garage was built 
on the lower lot. It could be partially underground, the same as the Oregon Pavilion garage. It could accommodate the same number of vehicles and probably at the same cost. And the roof of the garage could be used as park space with the added benefit of having views of downtown. Uh, this, this diagram uh, is from the draft EIR and it lists the advantages of a garage at Inspiration Point. The Cabrillo Bridge would be closed to traffic. Disabled parking and valet parking, thank you, could still be located at the Alcazar parking lot. There would be still two-way um, traffic on, uh, from President's Way. There would be no autos on the Cabrillo Bridge in the Plaza de Panama, Plaza de California, the Prado, or the mall. The Oregon Pavilion parking lot could be converted to parkland and it would be parkland on solid ground, which is far superior to parkland on a, a roof. A parking structure at Inspiration Point could take advantage of the natural slope of that site. In addition to these advantages, advantages the Inspiration Point parking lot would comply with all of the U.S. Secretary of Interior's rehabilitation, rehabilitation standards and the general plan elements. And in conclusion, we feel that the Inspiration parking lot, uh, the ins excuse me, the Inspiration, Inspiration Point alternative achieves all of the benefits of the Plaza de Panama proposal and even additional benefits which are not provided by that proposal. So thank you very much. Thank you. John Eisenhart with seated time from Ava Thorne, uh, followed by Dion Carlson. Hello, my name is John Eisenhart, uh, 1530 Brooks Avenue. Um, I come here not only as myself, but uh, as a preservation architect, but I have uh, five other preservation architects here in San Diego. Uh, we're part of a uh, coalition who oppose the Jacobs Plan. Let me read those names. Paul Johnson, Johnson & Johnson Architecture. I own Stigler IS Architecture. Kim Grant, Kim Grant Architects. Richard Bundy, Bundy & Bradshaw Architects. And myself, John Eisenhart, Union Architecture. Uh, these five firms, along with Heritage, Heritage is the hired consultant here, are, do the majority of the preservation work in the city. Five preservation firms oppose the Jacobs Plan. Take that into account in your decision. We also have three former HRB members, Paul Johnson, I own Stegler, and myself, uh, who are part of this coalition. Um, I'd like to go over some of the... Uh, do you have a presentation on that disc or something? I do. Okay, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's pause this time. Uh, it basically just uh, is a graphic that shows uh, the guidelines for rehabilitating the cultural landscape according to the Park Service. I have some points I'd just like to graphically show and, and verbally go over. Okay, let's get it. Let's hold up and just get it pulled up here. He said it's not a DVD. Thank you. All right, part of the standards is the, um, we're gonna look at the, uh, the guidelines for rehabilitating a cultural landscape, and that's what the, probably the most important document in front of you is that National Park Service letter. It uh, is very comprehensive and uh, goes over a lot of the points uh, that we're trying to make here today why this project is uh, incompatible with uh, many of the guidelines. Um, probably just, let's just go down to the very end. I think the most important is go through the approach here and that's sort of an introductory to the guidelines. If you go down to the last page where it, it talks about alterations and additions for new use. Some important words uh, in this document that really should take into account. Uh, next, next up a little bit higher. 
There it is, right there. So alteration additions for new use. When alterations to a cultural landscape are needed, are needed to assure its continual use, I'm not sure if we need to do this to continue Balboa Park's use. That's the first thing to think about that. It is most important that such alterations do not radically change, obscure, or destroy character-defining spatial organization or land patterns. Okay, we have a problem because we are doing that with this project. It's in violation. Also, go down, it, uh, it says, the installation of additions to a cultural landscape may seem to be essential for the new use, but it is emphasized in the re rehabilitation guidelines that such new additions should be avoided if possible and considered only after it is determined those needs cannot be met by altering secondary, i.e. non-character defining spatial organization and land patterns or features. Very important verbiage there. And then finally, I think I'd just like to touch on, uh, you know, your vote today, you're the uh, Historic Resource Board. It's your duty to protect our resources. This is HRB site number one. It's not up for chance or games or hardship, economic hardship talk. That uh, it's it's about the resource itself. If you're going to be, uh, if you're un uncertain about your decision, you have to be very conservative on this. It's the most important resource we have. When you leave today, I want you to be certain that you've protected and preserved Balboa Park. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on to Dion Carlson with seated time from Eric Hansen and Jerry Schultes. And then we'll, we'll actually then take a short break. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Dionne Carlson from North Park. Um, there is no doubt that um, the mayor and Owen Jacobs had the best of intentions in mind when they came up with this project. And everybody would love to see something wonderful happen in time for the 2015 centennial of our beautiful park. However, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Unfortunately, good intentions do not necessarily make for a good project. Even if you are not yet convinced by the arguments of nearly every historic preservation organization in our city, by the letters from the State, Histor State Historic Preservation Officer and the letters from the National Park Service, there remain innumerable reasons why you should vote against this project. Um, many of them domino effects of the bypass bridge. Um, as David said, David Marshall said, what is the real impact of this bypass bridge? And I'm gonna let others address th the historic impacts and I'm gonna talk about some of the traffic and circulation impacts. First, you have the nightmarish circulation pattern in the Alcazar Garden parking lot, where two-way traffic is pitted against circling cars attempting to pick up and drop off passengers, disabled parking patrons attempting to cross the same two-way stream of traffic, valet parking stacking up and then crossing and entering the traffic stream, tour buses disgorging passengers who also must cross the increasing traffic stream attracted by focusing all parking in the new organ pavilion lot. The current precise plan circulation is very diffuse. You can cross that stream of traffic in innumerable places. The problem with the organ pavilion circulation pattern, the organ, I'm sorry, with the um, Alcazar Garden parking lot traffic circulation pattern is that by concentrating so many vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to pedestrian interactions in this one small concentrated location, you actually greatly increase the likelihood of accidents, making dangers far worse than the current circulation pattern. Then we should talk about the sharply curving unsafe roadway, unsafe according to city street standards and park and rec standards, um, between the Alcazar Garden lot and the parking structure, cutting a steep canyon into the historic landform of the park, isolating the international cottages, and creating a pedestrian bottleneck at the single crossing point on the roof of the parking structure. The road canyon is so steep that there is no pedestrian access or egress to and from it except by following the road back up to, you got it, the, Oregon, um, the Alcazar Garden parking lot. The applicant's pretty renderings do not show the many yards of fencing and safety railings which will be required by this landform alteration. In the renderings, railings and the true depth of the roadway are conveniently obscured by the foliage the applicant is ever claiming will hide this park's various anachronistic intrusions into our park's natural beauty. 
the removal of existing and already paid for infrastructure like the Alcazar Garden restrooms and the restrooms across from the Organ Pavilion to make way for these new roadways with only a vague hope and not a guarantee that they will be replaced on the garden deck of the parking structure, which garden deck nor any of the buildings shown on it, by the way, um, none of them are included in the $15 million parking structure budget nor in the $40 million project budget. This project also removes 557 free parking spaces and replaces them with 758 paid parking spaces for a net gain of a mere, I think it changes, but 258 or 263 parking spaces. For all of this disruption, aggravation, and huge expense, not much bang for our city's buck. And yes, the city remains on the hook to pay for all of this. The city's own independent budget analyst report finds that it is unlikely that the parking structure will meet its rather optimistic 88% projected occupancy. Lastly, I'd like to remind you that you are not obligated to follow the staff recommendations. City, city staff serves at the pleasure of the mayor, and this mayor has been unrelenting in his promotion and fast tracking of this project. I can only imagine the pressure to which staff has been subjected. You, however, are not city employees. You are not obliged to bow to political pressure. So I ask you to remember why you all volunteer on this board, and I know you volunteer, um, and it's because of your love of our city's historic resources. And I urge you to remember that there are several superior alternatives for achieving the goals of um, the Plaza de Panama Committee, and to vote against this destructive project so that we can all move on and work on an alternative plan which doesn't do damage to the historic fabric of our city's most important national historic landmark, Balboa Park. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll, we'll now recess for a 10-minute break and be back at 3.10. <laughs>